Hi kiddos, it's Miss Rayborn here. Before we get started today, I wanted to show you an example of a mola. Last week with Miss Deb, you did a little bit of foam printing, and the directions for that are on the Schoology website on the first grade art page. In case you um, need a reminder or you need to see that again, I uploaded her directions in Schoology on your first grade art page, okay? So we're gonna learn a little bit more about a mola, and I want us to start with looking at a picture of some molas and um, a young girl who has some beautiful molas back behind her. She is from the Kuna tribe, and the Kuna tribe is from Panama, which is in Central America, but very far south. It is touching South America. So if you were in Texas and you traveled down through Mexico, and then you continued down through the peninsula at the tip of Mexico, through places like Guatemala and Honduras and Nicaragua and even Costa Rica, eventually you would reach Panama just before you reached South America. So farther south down than Texas. So here is an example of um, someone from the tribe and there are some molas back behind her. So let's look at a few examples of images of molas. So Miss Rayborn has a few posters that I wanted to show you with um, examples of what might be subject matter in molas. This one happens to be some turtles and you can see that these turtles have lots and lots of patterns. This one also happened to be a turtle. And then I'm really excited to share with you, Miss Rayborn actually has a mola. So I have never been to Panama before. However, oh, I need to turn it around the other direction. However, I have been to Costa Rica, which I mentioned is on its way to Panama. And when I was in Costa Rica, I bought this mola at um a, at a market where they were selling really beautiful arts and um there were crafts people there so i bought it from the person who actually made it and created it and one of my favorite things about showing it to kiddos is that there's a chance i've left it unframed all this time because i want to show you how um how this was made so the first thing you'll notice about it is it's super colorful and there are lots of patterns and lots of outlining. And once again, we're seeing a lot of nature. This one is a chicken and a fish. There's a chicken standing on top of a fish. And this one is symmetrical. So there's a chicken on one side, one on this side, a fish on each side. You can tell that they've made an attempt at keeping it symmetrical. Now, mola is the Spanish word for shirt. And I have been told that the reason they are called that is because often they are used as part of the clothing um, and the decorations of people, the Kuna people, which is how it got its name. And of course, to be a shirt, it has to be made out of fabric. So I'm hoping, I'm gonna turn this over so you can see the beautiful stitching on the back of it. Um, I'm hoping that you'll be able to tell even through the video that this is a beautiful piece of fabric cloth. And I told you, oops, sorry, it got stuck. I told you that I've left it unframed because I want you to see the fabric inside. So the way that these are made is that they layer and cut fabric. So for example, underneath here, can you see this pink fabric that's poking out and this yellow fabric that's poking out from underneath here. And then what we see is here is the pink showing through right here. So I, what I learned is that they stitch around and then they trim away a little piece of the black, which is on the very top. And then they fold and stitch on top of it so that what you see is the pink underneath. Here is a little bit of yellow and look at this, underneath the pink was the yellow. So I've left this undone, look, Here's some blue with yellow. And here we see blue and yellow designs. Let's look over here and see, yep, do we have orange fabric? We have orange patterns and designs here. And what we see poking out right here is orange. I bet over here we'll find some green. Look at that, how we can see all the different layers of colors that are underneath. Now, we are not going to make our molas out of fabric. We're not gonna be doing any stitching or sewing. However, we are going to be really inspired by these beautiful pieces of artwork in how colorful they are, 
the kinds of patterns that they have, um, and also the details. So just kind of take in lots and lots of different details. So I'm gonna put this away for now and talk to you about what comes next. If you are at home, last week you did a foam print with Miss Deb. And again, Miss Rayborn put the directions for that on the Schoology website, just in case you need to watch it again. If you're at school with Miss Rayborn, you made a foam print with me and ours are black on a colored piece of paper. If you're at home, chances are your print is colored because you colored it with marker and it's on a white piece of paper. Okay, the first thing we need to do is cut out around our living thing on our foam. Now notice Miss Rayborn left a little edge all the way around. I didn't cut right up to the edge of my beautiful turtle because we're intentionally trying to make some of these beautiful outline shapes on our living things. So I left a space and I went ahead and cut out my print. Doesn't matter if your print is in color because you're at home or if your print is black and white because you're at school with Miss Rayborn. So <laughs> your next job is you're gathering a few other colors of paper. If you are at home and you only have white papers, you could accomplish these outlines around your, um, your living thing that you printed with markers instead. Uh, or you could do it with paper. I'm hoping you picked up your paper kit from school so that you have some beautiful colors of paper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick, I cut out my living thing, and now I'm going to glue it down onto another color of paper. Something with kind of a high contrast, which means it really stands out on top of this one. If I had picked red, for example, maybe the pink might not pop quite as much because they're kind of similar. So I intentionally am picking something pretty different. Now, you can use glue, you can use tape, you can use whatever you happen to have wherever you're working. Miss Rayborn is gonna dot, dot, not a lot. And then flip it over kind of on the center of my paper because what I'm trying to do is create another one of those beautiful layers and outlines of color, like my example here. So I'm gonna give it a smush to make sure it really sticks down. And then I'm gonna start to cut out again. Now, when you're cutting, please remember always that you're cutting away from yourself all the time. If you notice, notice how Miss Rayborn's leaving a space of this beautiful yellow all around my turtle. Now, if I'm starting to cut and it gets a little bit too tricky, because I've got a big piece of paper kind of dangling over here. Remember, you can always just cut it off and trim it off. Also, sometimes if this big piece is too much work, I just trim off the extra pieces before I start to worry about the details. That way, I'm not holding such a large piece of paper. Remember that when we're cutting, we always wanna cut away from ourselves. we said. And if we can, we wanna turn the paper and not the scissors. Notice how Mrs. R is turning the paper as I'm cutting. I'm not turning my scissors as I'm cutting because that wouldn't be safe. I wouldn't be cutting towards my body, okay? So I'm gonna go around. I'm doing the best that I can to still kind of capture some of the details of my turtle, like the little ta tail, even though I am cutting out a second layer. So for my second color layer, I chose yellow. And I wanna be sure that I can see a little outline all the way around of the color, the first color, an outline all the way around of the second color. And then I showed you a couple pieces of paper. You might've guessed it. I'm going to go one more layer around my print. Now, again, if you're at home, and you don't have glue, you can use tape. Miss Rayborn's gonna show you. If you had tape, you could make yourself a little tape loop by taking your tape, looping it back around like this so it touches each other. So it makes a little loop and then you can stick it down so it'll be sticky on both sides. Okay, so it started out flat. I took one tail and I touched it to the other tail with the sticky part on the outside. And I made myself a little tape loop so if you're at home and you only have tape, that's totally okay. You could use some tape to make tape loops. If you have a glue stick, that works awesome. 
If you have real glue, that's wonderful too. It's totally up to you. So again, I'm gonna stick it down in the center of my page like this and I'm going to start to trim and I want to leave a layer of orange all the way around my turtle so I cut off some big chunks and then I'm going to do the same thing I'm sort of just going around and following the shape of my turtle now you're going to realize by the time you get to the third color layer right I had pink and then I had orange or yellow pardon me and now I have orange. And there aren't quite as many little details in the orange one because it's starting to get a little farther out with the colors. So that last layer, for example, I don't have little bumps where the eyes were because it just got bigger than that, right? So for today, what we're hoping for at the end is that you've taken your print and cut it out You've glued or taped it down to a second color of paper and you've cut your second color layer. And again, let me show you an example. I'll put it right next to it so you can see what I'm talking about. These beautiful color layers around is what we're trying to make. And then you glue it down onto your third piece of paper, which hopefully is a different color and you trim around so that you have sort of a color halo your print and then two more different colors is your job today. Now, if you happen to be at home and you do not have colored paper, you could, instead of cutting out your print, you could color around it with colorful markers or crayons or um, really anything you have there. Even paint would work if you're very careful not to touch your print because the marker will start to um, spread out. So you could color these colored layers around if you happen to be at home and you don't have colored paper, okay? So that is your job for today, and we're stopping right here. As you can see, we still have lots to do in the backgrounds and things like that, which we're going to work on in our next art class together. So getting to this spot is your job for today, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.